Hello, welcome back to the video series for Geography 300 Geographical Data Analysis at WVU. We are continuing with the second regression topic, which is the first of the topics on spatial regression. Now, here we are looking at the details of spatial lag and spatial error regression. And really what I'll start with is the what we saw uh, with ordinary least squares. So I know what I've been trying to avoid as much math as possible in this course, it comes up some. Here is some of it. So remember from our um, spatial from our ordinary least squares by variant linear, linear regression, we had the following structure. Our dependent variable of y is our intercept plus our coefficient times the independent variable plus the error term or the residual. And it's important really to look at and focus on the residual here. Because after all, this is really the part that we started with. We are looking at where our predictions go wrong, basically. And okay, let's assume that our um, residuals were significantly autocorrelated. So then again, we ask ourselves why. I will start as I did with the error model. So what we have done is put in one additional term. So we still have our intercept plus our coefficient times the independent variable. This hasn't changed and their interpretation has not changed. The values might because we're adding this extra term in here, but their interpretation doesn't change. This extra term says our errors, we, we found that they were spatially autocorrelated. So what we're going to do is break this error into two parts. One part is the spatially autocorrelated component. The other part is the not autocorrelated residuals. So we're breaking that apart. This lambda, Greek letter lambda, is a new coefficient. This, this w is our spatial waste matrix. And the Greek letter D here, which I just continually call squibble, our squibble here represents the spatially autocorrelated error part. That's kind of a, a lot.
Putting those together, though, we get something that can be interpreted a bit more readily. And it is the average error of the neighbors as defined by the spatial weights matrix. So what this is saying is, okay, if Mon County has a large error in the positive direction, I am now going to incorporate this into the neighbor's averages as another independent variable within that, um, with, within that regression equation. Likewise, the average error for Preston, Taylor, Marion, Wetzel counties as the four that neighbor, um, that are neighboring Mon County, their average errors get incorporated. And if they have a large average error, I'm going to, a, a large positive average error, then this W squiggle is going to be a large positive number. That means if lambda is positive, then I'm going to expect a higher rate of COVID, a higher dependent variable in Mon County because of the errors in the average of the neighbors. So that would be spatial error regression, and you will get a, an output table that among other things, it will give you your coefficient, your um, in, your intercept, your coefficient, but also this lambda term to tell you how that relationship, that spatial error came into play. Was that a positive, significant relationship? If so, if we find a positive lambda coefficient that is significant or a negative one but again the interpretation is more challenging let's assume for the time being it's positive if we find a significant positive relationship here then we go back to what i had in the first video that we used spatial error because we suspected that there was missing data something missing as an additional influence on the covid rate if this is a significant positive coefficient, we can then say, I don't know what it was, but there was some positive other thing going on above and beyond just what's happening with the independent variable here. That is spatial error. Spatial lag does something very, very similar, as you'll see, but it does how the difference is actually quite important. It also starts out by estimating, by saying our dependent variable is a function of the intercept plus the coefficient times our independent variable. To be distinct, we use a different coefficient, a different Greek letter for the coefficient, but we still have our spatial weights matrix. But now we are, instead of going with the errors at the neighbors, we're going with the dependent variable at the neighbors. So the spatial lag regression here 
is saying now my COVID rate for Mon County, still a function of mass compliance in Mon County, there's still the underlying base rate that would be um, that that would be from the the in, the intercepts, which again we may or may not interpret. Still have our error term, of course, but now it's saying go look at the neighbor's average COVID rate. Again, interpreting if this is rho is a positive coefficient. If that is positive, then I say, if my neighbors have a high rate, then I should too. As I said, that is why, given the infectious, infectious nature of COVID, why I would have gone with the spatial lag model personally. But again, you can make an argument, as I said, easily for the error matrix or the error uh, regression, because for example, there could be vaccination rates now coming into play. So if you go and you run the spatial lag regression and you see that this row is significant and positive, then you know there is what gets called a spillover effect. A high rate here is directly associated with the high rate in the neighbors, above and beyond anything going on with the independent variable. Likewise, a low value here goes along with a low value in the neighboring counties, again, regardless of what's going on with the independent variable. So these two, the difference here, the based upon the error term or based upon the dependent variable illustrates we use the error matrix or the error regression when we are assuming or hypothesizing missing data or missing processes affecting the dependent variable. We work with the lag regression if we expect the dependent variable to directly spill over into the neighboring unit. Again, however we have defined our neighborhood. So those are spatial lag and spatial error regression. The next and final video for this set is going to look at presentation of these results and again, how, how we can write them up. So as always, if you have questions, feel free to ask um, in Zoom class or in, um, in, in email, and thank you for watching. I'll see you at the next video.